Yeah, as your boy Chill here, welcome back to C++ Game Engine Infrastructure. Today we're going to be wrapping up our uh, little adventure in writing a logging utility. Yes. So there are plenty of features. Let me just show you here. There are plenty of features on the table that we could implement. Like I could go on for months on this topic, but I think we all want to move on to other things as well. And so what we're going to do is we're going to practice a little YAGNI. And that stands for you ain't gonna need it. And the, the philosophy behind Yagni is that um, we could all imagine a million features that would be neat and useful, but instead of implementing them all, why don't you just implement the ones you need as you need them? So you defer implementation. So there's a lot of cool stuff in here, starting with, you know, making the log processing multi-threaded so you can offload the work of actually writing logs to a different thread. And I mean, there are plenty of other features in here that would be nice to have. And, you know, we'll probably add some of them as we we go along but I want to move on so we're just going to in this video implement the the IOC registration of the logging system create the macro that we're going to be using and maybe create one more driver uh, so we can output to a file as well all right so the first step here is we are going to add a new item we want a header file and we're going to add log.h and this is the file that we will include when we want to do logging it's going to define the macro that we need and it is going to give us a function to find the default logging channel so here's our chill log macro creates the entry builder and it sets the channel using this function get default channel now in log.cpp here we define the de get default channel function. What we're gonna do here, to get the channel, we are gonna resolve it out of our singleton container, but I don't wanna resolve it out every time we log because logging is, you know, it's gonna be done from basically all of our code everywhere. And it, it could be a bit of an overhead. It's probably not a big deal, but what we're gonna do instead is we are going to cache the, uh, the channel pointer, and then we'll just return that cached pointer. And that has some implications on our system. What that means is that after we call get default channel, if we then inject a different uh, channel into our singleton container, we replace it, this will still get the old one. So what this is telling us is about our system, the way we're designing it. We're saying you configure it once during boot, but once it starts running, you can't then change things on the fly, which is a limitation, but it also makes things a lot simpler. It reduces the amount of like thread synchronization that we have to do if we can assume that after the booting, all the, the settings and everything of the log won't change. So that is the philosophy that we're gonna go with. Because I think it'll it's just the easiest and there's not a huge benefit in like reconfiguring the logging on the fly. I'm also going to add another function in here, void boot. So I think every subsystem will have its own boot function that registers its components into the IOC container. So let's also include container.h in here. Okay, so booting, what do we have to register? Well, the, the basic way that we're gonna be doing our thing is we're gonna register all of the, uh, the factories into the IOC container, and then we register the singletons that use the IOC container to generate their singleton instances. So the first thing we register is the default channel. We register that, register that under I channel, and it's going to need a vector of drivers, so we'll get the default driver for the default channel. We'll create the channel implementation passing in the drivers. And then what we want to do is we want to attach a policy. So we're going to go attach policy and we're going to do IOC get resolve. So we want a severity level policy, but we don't have that included in here. So we can actually just go include uh, severity level policy. And then that will let us do sev, yes. So we will resolve out a severity level policy from here. All right, so here's a problem, a little bit of a, a problem here. Um, apparently policies, we're, being, we're using unique pointers, but our entire system here with the uh, IOC uses shared pointers. And there's some reasons for why shared pointers will be better and some reasons for why unique pointers will be better. But we're just going to unify it with shared pointers because it's not a big deal and they both have their upsides and their downsides. Like you can move a unique pointer into a shared pointer, but it's not as efficient as if you call make shared. And that's the reason why I just want to make them all shared from the beginning. 
So in channel, let's change it from a unique pointer to shared pointer, shared pointer. And I think we probably have a problem here somewhere. Yeah, that should be a shared pointer. All right. So are you happy now? Beer is happy. Now if we go back to log.cpp. Yes. So now we have attached that. And we can just return the shared pointer to the channel. And there we go. So here is our factory for creating the default channel. Similarly, for the default driver, that is going to resolve to MSVC debug driver. And we get the default text formatter for that. Default text formatter resolves to text formatter. And severity level policy is severity level policy of error. Now, I was thinking, you know, we could technically, we could use a parameterized registration in here to make it a little more fancy, but we won't worry about that right now. This is going to be just the basics to get us started. Now, for the singleton, uh, so we do IOC sing register, and we're going to register log i channel. Now here's the thing, we have to pass it in a, uh, a functor, a lambda, that is going to use the IOC container to resolve out IOC channel. But this is annoying because we, it's like a lot of boilerplate for not good reason. We can actually make this simpler if we add a nice little helper to singleton. So let's go into singletons.h. We're going to include uh, container.h. And we're going to make a little, a little helper in here for us. So template class T and void register pass through. So this is a registration. Very simple is when you just want to pass right through into the IOC container. So you would do register T and we create our functor. And that just returns get resolve t. And get is just the, the function in the IOC namespace, just get the IOC container. Since we're in the same namespace, we don't have to prefix it with IOC get. Uh, but we could if we wanted to, and maybe I think that'll work. Yeah, IOC get just makes it more readable. Get the IOC container, resolve t out, and return that. So that makes things a little nicer for us because this is something we're going to be doing probably quite a bit of. So now we can just, instead of we just do register pass through, and there you go. We have registered our singleton implementation of the channel. Now I see another little small issue here in driver.h. Uh, yeah, again, we're using the unique pointer. We should just unify this all with shared pointer gonna make our life easier and it's a good option. So we'll just go driver and then we got to do MSVC debug driver. So that should be a shared pointer, that should be a shared pointer, that should be a shared pointer and you go up in here and where do you got a shared pointer and a shared pointer. All right, so that is good. All right, so let's test this out now. Uh, Main.cpp, we don't need this stuff, obviously. Uh, we don't need this stuff anymore. We do need to include our logging header and we do need to boot our IOC container. So in our boot function, we're going to boot all of our components, which will include uh, log boot. So we call log boot that boots up the system. And then we are free probably to log some stuff out. So if we build this, hopefully not too many errors, but probably going to be some errors. You probably want a semicolon there. Okay, fair enough. What's this? Same? Okay. How about you? Ah, uh, you should be a shared pointer. So this is stuff in our tests. And it was implementing the iChannel interface, which has changed. So that broke that code. There we go. Please run, please build with zero errors. And your boy is error free. Shall we run this? All right, so we get an error here. Can't find the entry when we're calling resolve i channel. So that's a problem. Why can it not find it in the singleton container? We should have registered it. Well, we created the boot function. We didn't call the boot function. Probably should call the boot function. 
Okay, fair enough. Can't say fairer than that. And here we go. We run, we get our logging out. You might have noticed a little coloring in here. So I added, and you can add this as well if you're interested in, added an extension, VS Color Output 64, and this allows you to basically set a regex for what lines get colored. So I used a regex for, you know, coloring fatal and error with red, basically. All right, next thing, I wanna add a driver that writes to a file, because I like to be able to log to files as well. So I'll make a simple file driver, takes in path and the formatter, and this will, you know, have a output stream. That's what it's going to use to write to the file. And the constructor is pretty simple. It just opens a file specified by the path that we passed in. But there's an interesting thing. So we could pass in something like uh, log slash default slash log dot txt. And normally if this these two folders didn't already exist, they would just error out. But if we call create directories with log default, uh, it will create them if they don't already exist and it'll do it recursively through the path. And we call path.parentPath just to remove this part of it. And then we can create the directories and, and then that makes sure that this works even within nested folders. So we can put our logs in a different folder. We don't have to worry about creating that folder ahead of time. Uh, submit is just, you know, we output using the formatter, very simple. And yeah, set formatter. So. Simple file driver, not too complicated, but now we should register this in our default because the default boot, I want it to output to the uh, debug, msvc debug and to a file. So we're gonna include simple file driver.h, but I don't really feel like I could register this one under simple file driver. But then why is this one the default? This is a little bit of like asymmetry here that I don't really like. And there's also another problem. So the whole beauty of this IOC system is that we get someone can inherit from simple file driver and replace it with a different implementation and then inject that. Um, so they could, after calling this boot function, they could then register their own simple file driver and replace the one that exists in here, modify the chain. But... If you have to inherit from simple file driver in order to register, that means that you are now married to basically this data here. You can override this function, you can override this function, but you're kind of married to this constructor and you're married to this data here. And what if your simple file driver is not using uh, std stream, f stream? What if it's using something else like uh, low level file input or output? So what we actually want to do here is for each of these things, I think I just want to define an interface and that one, this simple file driver was inherited from this interface. And then if you want to register, you register using the interface and then you can override that and inject it. So this makes the system a little more uh, flexible for customization after the fact. So anyway, so we're gonna do this for simple file driver. We're gonna do it for all the things basically. So text formatter already has iText formatter, so that's fine. So severity level policy, debug driver, and I think that's it. So now we go into here, and now we say we only will ever register with the i. So we'll do i simple file driver, and we'll turn a simple file driver from there. And for this one, we're gonna do i msvc debug driver and return a debug driver. This one too needs an I. And now everything is registered only in terms of its interface, which makes it more customizable in the future. Uh, so now we will resolve I. And here, because we're getting two of them and I don't want to pref, I want to want to give preference to either of these and say which one is the default. Uh, just doesn't, it just rubs me wrong. So we are going to resolve this as get resolve get out a debug driver and get a simple file driver. Now there's a problem here because now we're resolving out two different types, but we're trying to put them in the same vector and it doesn't like that. So we have to tell it uh, basically what the base type is. And the base type is I driver. Now they both fit in that container fine and everyone is happy, hopefully, we'll see. We'll try to build this now. 
All right, it does not like it, and the reason is pretty simple. Well, it's not simple if you look at this garbage here, but if you follow the trail, you'll find out, oh, here we're missing the path. So what should be our path? Well, we'll just do log. So we'll put in the log folder, and I'll sort of double backslash, and then log.txt. There you go. So this might build. And when we run it, we see, yeah, we got all the things in here. It's all good. Uh, and if I go now to, let me see if I can find the log folder. I'll go to log.txt, and yes, it has the logs that I generated, the error log and the fatal log. So beautiful, I think I'll just rename this one to logs. And all right, so what else? All right, now we got a little bit of a problem here. In debug, we look at my stack trace and it looks normal. I've got all my frames in here. Frame zero is the place where I actually invoked the log. But when I go to release, I run this again, we see nothing. It says stack trace, but there's nothing in there. And the reason is, is because the frame size is different between release and debug. Some things gets kind of squished together. Uh, so, that's not good, right? So what we actually need is the ability to change the amount of skip depending on whether we're in release or in debug. So we're gonna add another function to our entry builder. Allow you to set the trace skip depth and that'll be initially set at six. So here we can set that trace skip and then in here, instead of using this hard-coded value, we're going to do trace skip depth. All right, and then in the log.h, Let's put a little constant in our logging namespace, default trace skip. And that'll be dependent on whether we're in debug or release mode. And then we, we set our trace skip depth based on that uh, defined constant. And now when we run and release, we see, uh, well, this is annoying because this one is correct. Or I should say this one is correct. We skipped the right amount, but here, this one, we skipped one too many. So I think there's probably some inlining. The, pr the reason why release is different is because some inlining happens and then you don't get those functions in the stack trace. So this is better, but it's not perfect and we might have to look into it a little bit, but uh, we won't worry about it for right now. Last thing we're gonna do here, let's test our, uh, our injection customization a little bit. So we don't actually need these anymore, but what we do need is to include IOC container, and then after we boot, we're gonna go IOC get register, include severity level policy, and we're going to register log I severity level policy. Actually, I'll just, I'll just copy and paste this copy pasta and let's just uh, customize it by changing the level to warn and that should make this one appear so now if i let's go let's go back to debug now if i run this so we see our logging from f here there's an error we see a warning doesn't have a stack trace because warnings don't do stack trace by default and then we see another error fatal actually and so there you go there's how the customization is working as expected. Everything is good and generally when we're doing this, we'll just include log.h and then we'll just do chill log like this and everything will be nice. And that's gonna do it for this video and we're basically done for now with the logging. Like I said, there's tons of other features that we can add and we'll probably add some of them as we go along. Definitely wanna explore making a threaded uh, log handler at some point, threaded channel. But uh, that's for some time in the future. In the next video, we are going to make a very simple assert utility. And that's going to take a lot less time than logging, maybe only one or two videos. And after that, we'll be done all of this kind of diagnostic stuff and we'll move on to other stuff. And until then, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you soon with some more C++ game engine infrastructure.